Hey guys, it's Hannah, aka Hellbunny123, and today I'm going to show you how to do this and this. So I'm going to be cutting sims out and using a green screen technique. First of all, I'm going to build a photo studio slash green screen room, and this is going to be available on the gallery. So if you want to download it, you can use it for yourself. It's ideally designed to go on a community lot or just on an empty lot where you can take sims to take pictures of them. So whether that's where they just come out of create a sim or whether they're going through life changes such as they're pregnant or they've just aged up, you can take your sims to this spot and take some nice pictures or videos of them and put them in your YouTube videos or Twitch videos or I don't know, social media videos, whatever you want to do with them or photos, that is completely up to you. And the point of this room is, it's not very cluttered, it's not really to be lived in, it's literally just for the photos and video purpose. The room has got one side green and the other side pink with a photo studio in the middle if your sims want to take some pictures. And the reasons why it's got green is because green is the easiest colour to pick out and so is pink, they're quite unusual colours. What you want to do is you want to get your sims in this room and then zoom in or use the cinematic camera controls by pressing tab and taking some pictures of them or video clips like I'm doing so now and then we're gonna head on over to Photoshop so stay tuned so I've just opened up Photoshop now and I'm going to open up the screenshots I took earlier of the in the screen screen room so I took two earlier so let's just start off with this one and this is just the way I do it this isn't necessarily the right way or the only way there are quite a lot of ways to get your sims cut out of uh, background but this is how I do it so I've got the background layer here which is actually the whole image so I'm gonna go and just make a copy of that and then I'm gonna uh, invisibilize that I don't think invisibilize is a word but I can't think of the word now what's that mean what's this thing mean show it I'm just gonna not show it so now I've got the exact same image above it you can hear you can see here it's called background copy and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Oh, I can't talk. I'm going to go over here when my computer decides to work. And I'm going to pick up this. I think it's the magic select tool, the magic wand tool. So you might have the quick select tool already displaying there. So if it is, you just right click and then you go to the magic wand tool. I'm going to set my tolerance to, let's try it on 50. So the tolerance basically means sort of like how much of the color you select like it takes in if that makes sense for example like just to show you so i've got it on 200 percent i'm going to pretty much get the whole picture okay so i've got all all of them like if i delete that you'll be able to see what i've got so with that i had quite a lot selected whereas if i take it down to say 50 and i do the same selection again and i delete that now now that's pretty much cut the sims out actually pretty well yeah, I'm, I'm, okay, so there's a little bit of green there, but that's fine because it's not attached. Um, so that's done a pretty good job. And I would stick between like 50 or 70 when it's taking the whole background out. Let's just try what 70 is like. Yeah, I'm going to go with 70. And now because this will only grab bits of the color that are all connected, it might mean that you have a few bits like, you see this bit of green here? Which... For this, I'm going to take the tolerance way down, take it to 10 and see how I get on with that. And then I'm just going to select that. So there we go, selected that. And all I'm doing is pressing backspace to delete it. That doesn't look exactly perfect. But if I wanted, I could then go to the eraser tool and select a really small, small number and just like sort of fan it out slightly so it doesn't look so clumpy. Just like that okay so yeah I mean I'm pretty happy with that and I always test just to see if they are cut out well because although you can see on this transparent background it is a bit hard to see because of all the the gray and white boxes so I'm gonna create a new layer and that's just this icon down here and that will just be a blank layer and it'll go above the background bit background copy is what it's called so I'm gonna drag that underneath the background copy because you want the sims on top you always want those sims on that top layer if you want things going behind them. And then I'm going to just keep this layer one selected and just paint it black. So we've got a little bit of a green shadow on his arm now, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I can live with that. Um, and 
on his head as well, but that's okay. But as you can see, they're pretty much all selected, all selected out. And then if I was doing this for a thumbnail or something, I would probably, I don't know, I'm not the best at graphic design, but like, let's just make it a bit more exciting. So say if I colored this purple, and I'm still staying on this layer one here. So that's all purple now. So if I take the Sims off, you can see they're literally just like that. What is that? Is that on my screen? Oh, that's on my screen. Okay, and now I'm gonna add another layer and I'm gonna go to the paintbrush op option and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna select another color for starts because this would be bad. Um, this is gonna look awful by the way, but I'm gonna cast some red just to show you. And I'm gonna go through my paintbrush options and I'm gonna choose something which looks a bit funky. I have actually downloaded loads of custom paintbrush things, which are free to download. You, you pay for some, but I've downloaded all mine for free. And you can just Google search whatever you want and then free Photoshop brush. For example, this is like Halloween Photoshop brush. So there you go, that's a, a cross, a skull, a crossbow, a, what's it called? That'll come to me now, I don't know. Anyway, so if I just look for something that I want, say if I wanted some bokeh or something like that behind them, this obviously looks hideous right now, but you get the idea. So the Sims are not being colored in because it's all going on behind them, but they are getting some funky background stuff. And the reason why I don't paint on this purple layer is because if I want to now, I can just change the the color of that purple layer without affecting the the red I've got going on here and vice versa. So you can see it all coming together now and that's it really. But also if I wanted to separate the Sims because they're not touching, I'm actually quite fortunate. So what I would do is I would go to the background copy, which I'm gonna call, I'm actually gonna name this Sims because this is just confusing. So Sims, I'm gonna click on the Sims layer and I'm gonna select this sim just with the, what's this called? The rectangle marquee tool. And then I'm gonna right click. And then what I would do is select via cut. And that means that I've now got this sim on one layer and this sim on the other. So I can take him off completely or I can take her out completely. So because he's facing away from the camera, it's probably best to have her in here. And then I can move her where I want, but I could also bring him back in and, oh, and move him where I want as well. And if I wanted him in front of her, I just move the layer forward. And so now they're sort of romantically looking into each other's eyes and being very close. So there you go. And then when it comes to saving the image, you literally just go file, save as, and then save in the location you want and called what you want. So this would be like test, PSD. But obviously if you wanna save it to um, YouTube, you would save it as a JPEG. Okay, so I've now just opened up Adobe Premiere Pro. This is just because I have the Adobe Creative Cloud or Creative Suite or whatever it's called. I do pay monthly for it and it isn't the cheapest thing. So if you don't have those, you don't need to have those necessarily, but this is just what I use. I'm gonna show you how I do it using those programs can download free trials of these as well. So if there was like a thumbnail or a video you really wanted to make in particular, you could download a free trial and use it for that. So I just clicked on, clicked on new project and I'm gonna call it test and click okay. It's all pretty much, oh. Oh yeah, that's fine. Um, it's all pretty much set up to the right sort of layout. So I'm gonna go, just so you know what I'm doing, if I go to window workspace, you set up in the editing layout. And hopefully if you are confused and don't know what I'm pressing, if you click that, you sh your screen should adjust to this. But if you're really happy with the way your screen looks, don't press that because it will mess it up. Hopefully you'll be able to understand now. So the project test, this is basically like where all the files go. So I'm gonna click Command and I for import. Right, so I've got my file and I think I'm gonna open this one. I think this is the one I was just working on. And I'm gonna just drag and drop this onto the timeline. Um, basically, I just filmed The Sims earlier, as you saw, and I'm gonna cut to a bit where I quite like. If I just find a bit, oh, here we go. So I'm not really moving the camera here. I did try and move the camera a little bit, actually, like zoom in and out, there we go. Oh, no, not, not like that. So let's just, I'm gonna cut it there. So I just pressed, um, 
I just got the blade out, which for me is the shortcut of B. I don't know what it is for others because I actually have mine set up to final cut shortcuts. Okay, so let's just, oh, they're kissing, how romantic. So, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Crap, don't do that, don't delete. So my computer is very laggy and that's why all my stuff jitters. But there we go, there's a little clip of them kissing and sort of being all romantic and lovey-dovey. So I'm gonna cut that there. And cut that there. And now I'm going to go into the effects. So the effects are here for me and I don't know where they would be for you, but I'm pretty sure if you type in effects, does it take you to that? I think if you go to help and then effects, I think it does take you to this. Otherwise it should be on the side. I'm gonna go into video effects, down to keying, and then I'm gonna click on ultra key. So I'm gonna drag ultra key to the video clip, and then I'm gonna go at the top here in effects control. I know this is probably quite complicated actually, but hopefully you're keeping up. So we've got the effect on the clip now, and we're gonna to go to effects control to see how it's doing. Then I'm gonna, where it says key color, I'm going to click this little eye drop, you can say it's an eye drop, and select the green. So for some reason, my laptop does not select the right green, but on yours it should select the exact green. And because my laptop is being really difficult, I'm going to go down and change the setting to aggressive. Right, okay, so it's kind of got rid of it a little bit, but it's not really that good. To test it out again, I'm going to add an image. So I just need any old image, so let's just bring this screenshot in. Just for the purpose of this. So, okay, that this is really awful. Anyway, we've, so we've got that picture behind them. So you can see that the background is getting transparent, but it's not transparent yet, because my laptop likes to make my life difficult for me. So I'm gonna go into, back to the ultra key in effects, and I'm pretty sure if I just go through here, there are different settings. So I'm gonna adjust this one, the Luma, which sounds like a funny name. I'm gonna put it like there. I don't know what this spill does, but it doesn't seem to be anything. Oh, okay. Uh, no. So that looks like a lot better. And then we can adjust even more of these settings if we want, you know, to soften the edges or to keep them really hard, that's up to you. We've got the contrast, which might be worth playing around with. And then like the midpoint and stuff like that. So there we go. We've pretty much got two sims cut out and with an image behind them. And the image obviously wouldn't be of their toddler walking across the room. I don't know, I, I just thought it was a funny picture. It would be something else. And that can be up to you, whether you want like a romantic backdrop or anything like that, that's completely up to you. You can literally put anything there. So, you know, and you can see here, I move the camera and the green screen does, does still work when the camera moves. I know it's laggy, but see, there you go. It, there you see, that's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. So hopefully that makes sense. And hopefully that gives you something to try out. I'm, I'm hoping so anyway. If it, you do find it useful, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you've got any more requests on tutorials, anything like that, or if you want more information about how I did this, if I wasn't that clear, let me know because I'm not used to doing tutorials and I'm kind of just basing it on what I would do. And like I said, this isn't necessarily the only way, this isn't necessarily the absolute right way, this is just one way I do it. And if you want to download the green screen photo studio, you can, it's in the gallery. Just search my EA ID, which is hellbunny123. Thank you for watching and goodbye.